Hey everybody, before we start the video, I just want to point out that the entire video, while I was editing it, I realized I was calling Isabella Elizabeth. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. I'm not re-recording, so, uh, just get over it. <laughs> it's Isabella, I mean Isabella. That's her name. I call her Elizabeth. Oh well. Move on to the video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about The Promised Neverland Season 2, Episode 4. And this was an interesting episode, not because, well... There were some kind of soft, exciting moments, I would say. Uh, actually, one that kind of really didn't spook me, but it kind of like actually caught me off guard. But much of this episode was kind of in a lot of ways downtime. It was a lot of the kids just kind of building a life. They, they had thought, we're going to just kind of live our lives here for a minute. Once we kind of have a place and a, for that we can bring the other kids back from the, that are still at the farm to... Then we can go out and get them, and they do some training with the bows and arrows, and there's some good kind of just like they're living their lives kind of stuff. One thing I will say that I was surprised about with this episode is that the phone and the wall of doom that was discovered in the last episode were not quite as important as I thought they would be. The phone ended up just being a recording of Minerva, and he ends up being, oh, I don't even remember his name, uh, John something, something with a J. Um, but it ends up like, oh, William Minerva is like a, a fake name that he uses. Um, and it turns out that he once worked for like the farm system, but because he didn't like how things were going, he decided to go AWOL and help the children if they ever did escape. Uh, and that's what this, like, little hideout is. Is uh, But he, it was a recording, so they didn't even talk to him. Um, and then as far as the Wall of Doom goes, I don't know, I don't know if I missed something or if they just never really addressed it. The kids kind of are still shocked there when they see it. And then one of the girls picks up, like, a diary. I don't know if there was anything written in it before or whatever. She starts writing in it uh, later on. But they never really address it. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, okay, this is some crazy stuff. Uh, but at least we know that the William Minerva, or whatever his name is, at least we know that, technically speaking, this this little hideaway is for us to escape to. The really interesting stuff is happens more in the ha latter half of the episode, which I guess you could say really about all these episodes. is. But uh, at some point, so they're all living their lives... And they're really getting kind of comfortable. And then suddenly an explosion goes off. And honestly, this is the part that really caught me off guard because I wasn't expecting. I was expecting, oh, uh, demons coming out of the forest and, like, coming after them or whatever. But the, an explosion goes off. It blows the top off of, like, the hatch. And we get these men in, like, SWAT gear coming down. Like, regular-ass people, just normal people coming down in SWAT gears. They got machine guns and they're, like, coming in. And they're looking around. At this point, all the kids have hide, hidden away, except for Don and one of the younger kids who were in the surveillance room. Uh, but most of the kids are hidden away. And these guys are just kind of doing a sweep of the hideout. At first, I wasn't sure what to think of them. Were they good guys? Were they bad guys? And I think there's a lot of interesting stuff to be had here. Because we already know humans technically are working for uh, these demons. Uh, the promise wasn't just, oh, the farm, like... Humans can be farmed, and then that's it. Obviously, there is still a system of humans that, whether they wanted to be part of the system or not, are in this system. And now that I'm thinking about it, so you have the ex like the really smart uh, women that ultimately come out of these farms um, that like are like spared, I guess you could call them. Um, but then they're turning to the mothers or like the like housekeepers to watch over the farms. What about the really, really smart guys, which I wonder are maybe these tactical people and they're used as kind of like the law enforcement for the humans. I just find it really interesting because it's like in the first couple episodes, they were being hunted by specifically demon, hunt, like demons that were meant to be hunters. They were hunting the children. And when that didn't work, then they send in these SWAT gear people. So that's kind of interesting that like... Like, I wonder if it, that's just the natural progression or whether they were like, well, let's just send some humans because we don't care if they die. Uh, and not that the kids would kill anybody. Not, well, okay, they'll eventually have to kill somebody. But my point is the 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 regular people that they get sent out in the SWAT gear, they the demons probably ultimately don't care as much about as opposed to, oh, 
our top demon guy that we sucked out to hunt uh, got his head cut off. Either way, this latter half of the episode is basically the kids running away from these guys with guns, and it's like kind of it's not scary per se, but it's it's like really interesting to see them. They they at, at this point they were thinking. Humans are our friends if we can find them. Are they good guys? Are they bad guys? What is their deal? Um, and their whole thought process is that they're going to go eventually live in the world of the, of the humans. So, like, now they're being hunted by humans? This is kind of a messed up situation for the kids. It's one thing for the demons to be the bad guys, but then when there's no, like, clear divide between, oh, humans and, and demons, as far as them being their enemies... That's not good. And the thing that makes it way more interesting, honestly, and they, they, they could have just been attacked by the SWAT, this uh, SWAT team, and it could have just ended there. But in, in between the scenes of them being attacked, you, we get shots of Elizabeth in her jail cell because apparently she was, like, reprimanded for losing a bunch of kids who to thunk it. Um, so she's in a jail cell and basically being asked, hey, you want, you can go after those kids, um... Maybe we'll reward you or at the very least let you out of this jail cell. And we get a couple of things. So two demons. So first of all, she's asked by like the grandmother or like whatever. The old lady that's kind of in charge of all the mothers. Um, and she kind of has this like dim look on her face. And she's just kind of like, nah, I'm good. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that. Um, but then the demons come back. And they kind of do something weird to her. I don't know. They bring this flower, this like white flower. And I thought they were going to like stick her with it. Um, but now I think it maybe has something to do, maybe it's like a, like some kind of mental or like a chemical thing that they use to like kind of spur her on and make her want to do it, I guess. Cause she kind of switches a little bit, uh, between just completely being despondent and not interested and, oh, suddenly she's kind of like, okay, I guess I can do it. But whatever the case is, it's not just that because they also offer her two rewards, one of which is her complete freedom. So they value these kids and their nice meaty brains uh, so much that they're willing to let Elizabeth go. They're letting, they're, they're willing to remove the thing in her heart to like, that would blow up or whatever. They're even willing to like, I guess, I don't know how, like you can remove tattoos, but maybe there's like a special thing. I don't know, like made specific to the promise Neverland that like whatever, but they said they'd remove the tattoo on her neck. They said they removed the little bomb heart thing and just like say, Hey, if you want to go and like live in the world of the, of the humans, Go ahead after that, um, but you got to go get the kids back. Now, they whispered something in her ear as a second reward. We don't know this. She kind of had a gasping look on her face as if it's like something like crazy. But honestly, I don't know if I have any guesses about it. Like it, it wouldn't be, oh, she could take uh, the kids with her or anything. They want the kids. They're not going to let anybody else have the kids. The kids will come back and get eaten. Uh, so it's not like they can like... It's not like they're bargaining and giving her, like, a second thing that, like that. But I wonder what what else could they have, other than her freedom, what else could they have possibly offered her as a reward with, like, basically no strings attached other than bringing the kids back? Um, I honestly have no guesses. The end of the episode is the kids running. They, they, they go through, like, a cavern that a couple of the kids had found as, like, a secret hideaway and, uh, and a way out of the uh, hideout. And they're, they're running and running and running. And there, there's some kind of stuff where, like, Emma and Ray kind of get separated from the main group. And the main group ends up getting captured by these uh, SWAT team guys. And that is that is until a demon, well, one of, like, the wild demons, I guess. It's one of, like, the animal-like demons. Similar to the one that was chasing them at the very beginning of the season. Um, sneak, come, I don't know how they m didn't see him, but, like, the kids notice it. And it kind of comes out and just eats all the adults. So now you have all the kids running into the woods and they don't have really any place to hide anymore. I'm left with a ton of questions after this episode. What is the significance of the flower? What was the second thing that they offered Elizabeth? Uh, what is the hierarchy and like structure of the, I guess, military of the demons? Uh, did they send out like regular hunting demons right off the bat? And then if that doesn't work, they send out humans with guns? Seems like a weird, uh, a weird twist there. And that's the other thing. So the demons that were talking to Elizabeth were like, if our current plan doesn't go well, you're going to be the ones going after the kids. And I imagine that they're kind of going after like a little bit of a shock value here for the kids where it's like, 
if suddenly outside the walls the kids see Elizabeth, they're going to be like, kind of like, what the heck is going on here? Uh, so maybe they'd send some demons with her or something like that to kind of round them up. I don't know. All in all, I like this episode. I thought that I thought there was a good progression. I do wish that the the wall had a bit more significance. It had some names on it, so it's like clearly it's like uh, important in some capacity. But they never really touch on it as far as like yo, they never have a scene where the kids that found it talk to the other kids and be like, "This is messed up. What the heck is going on?" And they they only kind of talk about like the Minerva stuff where it's like, oh yeah, he's on our side, so we're good to go. Um, so that's that's kind of a letdown. Especially after the last episode was just like, this is a crazy ending. Oh my god. One thing to note, and I didn't know this, and honestly, it really doesn't make a difference to me because I don't I haven't read the manga, but apparently the second season is gonna be going off into some like anime exclusive content. Um, apparently the creator is also kind of heavily involved or at least somewhat involved with the creation of this season. So I'm sure it's the kind of thing where it's like, maybe they're fixing stuff that they wanted to like add in or do whatever. And that's kind of it. But it's interesting that they would like automatically, like the, the series is over in the manga. So it's like, it's not like they have to like pad it out or anything. Uh, so maybe it's just stuff that they, that the, the manga cub wanted to add in that they never got a chance to before. I, I, I like the episode. That's kind of all I have to say about it. Otherwise, it's I, I think the interesting points are Elizabeth going after the kids. And I'm wondering in what capacity they will uh, come into contact. What's with the like military style uh, people coming after them? Uh, at first, I wasn't sure what they were. Maybe they were good guys and it was just a misunderstanding. But now I'm starting to think that maybe not so much. Uh, and then second of all, uh, where are the kids going to go after this? They lost their hideout. So what can they do? Bows and arrows are only going to get them so far. Maybe they steal the guy's guns or something like that. Who knows? Either way, that'll do it for me. I will see you guys in another video. If you liked anything I had to say, leave a like. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in another video. I don't know why I did just that. I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. All right. Bye-bye.